Our lives are like rivers that flow into the sea. Jorge Manrique, Coplas a la Muerte de su Padre. Welcome back. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. Chapter 29 relates the adventure of the enchanted boat. Finding a small fishing boat tied to a tree on the banks of the Ebro River, Don Quixote explains that they must board it. This might strike modern readers as odd, but it perfectly parodies similar events found in the books of chivalry in which mysterious empty boats transport knights errant to far off lands where other adventures await them. Don Quixote explains, this is in accord with the books of chivalry and the enchanters. Sancho reasons that the boat is probably owned by some local fishermen, but he still submits to the feudal relationship with its proverbial promise of future rewards at his master's proverbial table. There's nothing to do but obey and lower my head following the proverb, do what your master commands and sit with him at his table. Notable here is Sancho's immediate panic at being adrift. Moreover, he laments the cries of his ass whom they left tied to a tree with Rocinante. He began to tremble, fearing his perdition, but nothing caused him greater pain than the sound of his gray braying and the sight of Rocinante struggling to break free. Don Quixote tells him not to worry and considers how far they have traveled. We must have emerged from the river and traveled at least 700 or 800 leagues. We have already passed or are about to pass the equinoctial line. It's an absurd and ironic estimate. Don Quixote may have a more reasonable sense of time than his squire, but he has zero sense of distance. Now Don Quixote produces a long parody of cosmography focusing on the international scope of the Spanish Empire and hinting at the scientific advancements of the day. He mentions the astrolabe, an instrument crucial for navigation, and refers to the calculation of one's latitude using the pole star. But he also clings to a Ptolemaic view of the cosmos, which yielded to the Copernican system in the middle of the 16th century. Similarly, Don Quixote's story about fleas dying when sailors crossed the equator during voyages between Cadiz and the West Indies mocks a common belief. Did you know the Philippines were named after Philip II of Spain? Note Don Quixote's strange allusion to economic incentive as proof. Upon crossing the equator, no fleas are found even if sailors are offered their weight in gold. Without there remaining a single one alive, nor could you find one anywhere on the ship, even if you were offered its weight in gold. How much could fleas weigh? Also funny here is Don Quixote's accumulated list of nautical and astronomical terms with which he befuddles Sancho. You don't know anything about the colures, lines, parallels, zodiacs, ellipticals, poles, solstices, equinoxes, planet signs, points, and measurements which compose the celestial and terrestrial spheres. Amidst all of this, Sancho checks for fleas and finds quite a few, thus disproving Don Quixote's entire account of their voyage. Either your experiment is false, or else we have not gone as far as your grace says, not by many leagues. Will Don Quixote pay gold for these fleas? Of course not. Next, Hidalgo and Squire are dragged toward water wheels, athenas, used for milling wheat. Don Quixote takes these for castles in which innocent victims are held against their will. He even confronts the millers who tried to steer him away from certain destruction. Release and give liberty to the person whom you are holding captive in your fortress or prison. Sancho prays for divine intervention, but the narrator specifies that they are saved not by a miracle, but by the efforts of the millers. Sancho fell to his knees, devoutly praying to heaven to free him from that manifest danger, which it did via the industry and quickness of the millers who stopped the boat by pushing their poles against it. The phrase recalls Basilio's trick at Camacho's wedding. Quixotic mission. What causes Sancho's anxiety during the adventure of the enchanted boat? A, his gray and Rocinante struggle to escape. 
B. There's an eclipse. C. The river is polluted. Correct answer. A. His gray and Rocinante struggled to escape. Bourgeois reality to the rescue once again. To be more precise, however, the narrator says that the heavens worked their magic indirectly. In other words, by way of the Miller's industry. This is an excellent distinction between the humanist belief system and those of Europe's many religious fanatics. Still, the boat is destroyed and Knight and Squire must be rescued by the Millers who actually dive into the river to save them. Funny here is the narrator's contradictory description of Don Quixote. This was fine by Don Quixote who knew how to swim like a goose, although the weight of his arms took him to the bottom on two occasions. Don Quixote and Sancho avert a Trojan defeat. Sancho is annoyed, but he still pays the fishermen 50 reales for the destruction of their boat. Note Don Quixote's reaction. First, he accepts defeat, turning melancholic and stoic because he cannot help those trapped in the castle. This adventure must be destined and reserved for another night. Cervantes scholars often read this as the beginning of the final fallen phase of Don Quixote's adventures. Even more interesting, Don Quixote formulates the fruitlessness of his endeavors as a matter of two conflicting magical forces that have combined to neutralize his free will. He says this to himself, enough. In this adventure, two valiant enchanters must be doing battle and one blocks what the other attempts. One bestowed this boat upon me and the other tossed me from it. May God save us, for the world is but machinations and deceptions, all opposing one another. I can't go on. Astonishing. Don Quixote has come to terms with the idea that the events of reality, perhaps of history itself, are beyond the control of a single man. Here is the romantic hero of the 19th century, lost, dark, solipsistic, and resigned to defeat. That's all for now. Find out what happens with our characters in our next discussion of this fascinating novel. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.